Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, December 19th. Texas Gigafactory Mexico is expected to be announced in the coming days as more details are coming to light. A local report in Mexico states that the announcement could come as soon as Friday and includes more details about the project. According to the report, Tesla plans to first invest $800 million to $1 billion into the factory outside of Monterey, with the goal of producing parts and supply for other factories, then eventually producing full vehicles at the factory. Over time, Tesla could invest several billion dollars into what is likely to be known as Gigafactory Mexico. As we previously reported, in order for Tesla to achieve its goal to ramp up its global production to 200 million vehicles annually by the end of this decade, the company will need to have 12 gigafactories, which means it needs to announce eight new ones within the next few years. Tesla has confirmed that Gigafactory Berlin has reached a new production rate of 3,000 electric cars per week. This is just after Texas reached the same milestone. During 2022, Tesla has been trying to ramp up production at Gigafactory Berlin and Texas simultaneously. The goal was originally to produce 5,000 vehicles per week at each facility, by the end of the year. But it looks like they had to settle for 3,000, which is still to be noted far more than many other EV makers at the moment. If maintained, a production rate of 3,000 vehicles per week would result in an annual rate of 150,000 vehicles. Tesla Gigafactory Berlin is currently only producing the Model Y at the moment. Once it reaches a vehicle capacity of 5,000 per week, the automaker is expected to start adding new models to the production schedule. Elon Musk has put his role as head of Twitter up to a vote. Not too unsimilar from his vote on Twitter to reinstate Donald Trump, but this time, the target was on himself. He asked, quote, Should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll. With the Trump results, it was actually a little closer, but this time it was 57% voting yes, he should step down. Musk is known for blocking people on Twitter that he disagrees with, but... With a voting pool of over 17 million people, his list probably doesn't sway the results all that much. If we extend the timeline of his full self-driving promise by a fair length, Elon Musk is generally a man of his word, although the phrasing step down may have some wiggle room. Twitter is still a private company, one that Musk owns himself. Right now, there is no clear replacement nor a board of directors from which to delegate this process. But in any case, hopefully this frees up Musk to spend more time on Tesla. There has been clamoring from several investors and investor groups that have been requesting exactly that. Tesla announced that it has completed over 500,000 solar panel and solar roof installations to date. Despite some supply issues in the solar industry earlier this year, Tesla has achieved a record quarter in the U.S. residential solar market. Today, they reached a milestone, which is roughly 4 gigawatts of solar capacity deployed. Lately, Tesla has also been increasingly relying on third-party installers to deploy its home energy products. Tesla is gradually becoming more of a supplier with its global ownings in the home energy ecosystem through products like Powerwall in addition to the solar products. Speaking of that... Electrek takes a look at one of the most impressive residential Tesla builds to date. A single home with 11,000 square foot Tesla solar roof five power walls, and three Tesla inverters. The project is in Katy, Texas, and the builder is William David Holmes, who spared no expense with the green energy plant, or home. (laughs) Based on the $35 to $50 square foot estimate and the 11,000 square foot project, we can estimate between $385,000 to $550,000 for solar alone. This ultimate Tesla house will undoubtedly sell for millions of dollars based on the property size and the high likelihood of packaged amenities. Porsche is delivering significantly faster home charging times to current Taycan owners by offering a new product that can be retrofitted into existing EVs for $1,850. Porsche says that the onboard charger can cut the 0 to 100% 19.2 kilowatt charging times to 4.8 hours for performance battery-equipped Taycans compared to the 9.5 hours with the previous charger. EVs equipped with the performance battery will be able to charge from 0 to 100 in 5.3 hours compared to 10.5. Aside from charging performance, the vehicle remains the same, so the specs don't change for 0 to 60 or acceleration or anything like that. 
Similar to Ford, General Motors is rolling out a charging network that hinges on their dealer network. Unlike Ford, the GM network will consist of level 2 chargers that take hours to recharge a car. General Motors is offering participating dealers up to 10 units of the 19.2 kilowatt level 2 chargers. GM even states, quote, allowing drivers to get a roughly 80% battery charge in under 3 hours. Now, even if that charge speed is entirely unreasonable for road tripping, General Motors seems to be incentivizing dealers to join in by corralling customers to waste time at their locations. If you ask me, I would rather pay money to charge at a real stop instead of sitting at a dealer while slowly charging for several hours. And I've had the experience of doing both so far. Mazda has been falling behind in the EV race, but a new patent from the automaker suggests that an electric Mazda 3 could be in the works with a similar sedan-like body structure. Perhaps more importantly, the patent also reveals a large enough battery pack to actually provide driving range. Mazda's current compliance EV, the MX-30, only has 100 miles of range, which is simply not competitive right now. But the new patent uncovered by Drive shows an EV with a variable motor placement and a thin but healthy sized battery. Although they detailed no exact specifications, the body structure looks like it could be an electric version of a replacement for a Mazda 3. The patent itself is made for the purpose of body structure, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this electric vehicle will be built. However, I remain hopeful that the Japanese car market can turn it all around, and I look for hope in even the smallest places. Okay, it is opinion time, or I suppose announcement time. Expect shorter quick charge episodes as we approach December 25th. This holiday week, I'll be traveling a little bit for Christmas. Sometimes when the holiday falls on the weekend, it almost gets run over by regular responsibilities, and other times it seems to consume the whole week. This year, I'm expecting the latter. I anticipate that news will be in short supply on account of the holiday, and I'll stand ready to make shorter episodes of Quick Charge as a result. In today's community comment found on YouTube, ASJEOT says, Great news summary. Thank you very much, ASJEOT, and welcome to the channel. Quick Charge is your one-stop shop for highlights of the day's electric news. Free from fluff, light on opinion, and despite my preference, currently light on sponsorship. But don't you worry, soon enough we will be interrupting your fulfilled sense of cultural obligation to stay informed and extract monetary value from your time. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.